All right, let's chat some more about crossbows. I've shown several on my channel over the years, two medieval reproductions and three modern ones, at least. It's easy to lose track of things sometimes over the years. And uh, I'm going to tell you which one my favorite is after all is said and done, uh, which might surprise you. Oh, and before I forget, two of the crossbows that I'm going to show you in this video I'm selling right now. I'm going to post a Google Doc down below with description and pictures and contact info. So if you're interested in them, go there and let me know. And I keep updating it whenever there's something new to sell. I've been downsizing my collection quite a bit lately. So uh, feel free to keep checking it. So this one right here is from Todd's Workshop. It's what I would consider a light crossbow. You know, maybe if you want to call it medium, something like that. Uh, even though it has a draw weight of 300 pounds, sounds like a lot, but it has such a short power stroke, which is this distance right here. The power stroke is the distance from the string's resting position to its fully cocked position. So in this case, that's a mere five inches or 13 centimeters. So of course that matters for how much time it has to accelerate the bolt. And as a result, this is not as powerful as you might think, nowhere near. Uh, based on the, the tests I've done, the velocity I've measured is 124 FPS, which is really not terribly fast. So the kinetic energy that I calculated was 24.76 foot-pounds or 33.57 joules. And here's the most powerful crossbow I've owned. This is the Barnett Ghost 400 which has a draw weight of 185 pounds, so substantially less than uh, the medieval crossbow, but the power stroke is literally three times as long. So the power stroke goes from here all the way here. So this is where the, the bolt ends up, the end of it, and the, the string accelerates from here all the way to there. That's 15.75 inches or 40 centimeters of power stroke. And the velocity as a result is dramatically higher. I measured an average of 357 FPS and the resulting kinetic energy is 135 foot-pounds or 183 joules. So... 183 versus 33, you know, 34 if you want to round up. Now, kinetic energy is not the only thing that matters. Momentum matters too. So for armor penetration, you, you should take both into account, but it still gives you a general idea of the kind of power involved. And this thing here produced some very impressive results in various tests. The bolts go so fast, they just hit like a thunderbolt and bury themselves deeply. So this is a serious crossbow. And of course, it's also very accurate. It's got a scope, as long as that's zeroed properly, and as long as your trigger control is good, you can deliver extremely accurate shots with this. So I've been impressed by it. I very much like it. However, it's not my favorite. Uh, mainly because it's it's just a little bit unwieldy. Uh, I, maybe I shouldn't say unwieldy, but it's just, it's large, it's long, you know, it's pretty wide too, and it's not light. And compound bows and crossbows generally require a little more maintenance, or at least you have to check them more thoroughly. Uh, they are mechanically very efficient, but um, it's, it's a little bit more complex. The more complex something is, the more potential for failure there is, mechanical failure. Then there's the heavy medieval crossbow, which has a draw weight of almost a thousand pounds, which sounds absolutely insane, but once again, it does not have a terribly long power stroke. Now, unfortunately, I never got around to measuring the FPS and calculating the kinetic energy. Obviously, it's going to be quite a bit more than the other crossbow and it's also going to have significant momentum because those bolts are pretty heavy. 
so that makes a difference and this one requires a windlass so you have to untangle the windlass and attach it and then crank it to fully cocked crossbow take it off put it aside and then put the bolt on then you're ready to go so it takes a little while to get ready that one's also significantly heavier than the lighter medieval crossbow and it is quite loud that's easy to underestimate whenever shooting these ideally you'd wear ear protection because this can over time in fact damage your hearing so crossbows like this really bring up the question why did people even bother considering how much slower this is than a bow and they, they still have advantages of course like for example you don't need as much training with a crossbow as you do with especially a long bow with a draw weight of you know 120 pounds or 140 or even more for one it takes quite a while to build up the strength to be able to fully draw it and also it's harder to aim with it compared to a crossbow with a crossbow you don't need a ton of practice to hit a target reliably well also, uh, it's pretty injury friendly. After my shoulder ligament was torn from getting hit by a car in 2016, I haven't been able to draw bows effectively. There's something about that draw height specifically. You know, like I can do a barbell row, for example, or a pull like this, but if I have to pull up here like that, that causes quite a bit of pain and I just don't have the same strength up here. And with a crossbow, of course, you can easily circumvent issues like that. Even an injured man can still shoot a crossbow pretty well. And in fact, even with missing fingers, if you were missing your index finger or your middle finger or even both, there's no way you're gonna be able to draw a bow. However, a crossbow with a goat's foot lever, for example, to operate it, you can absolutely operate the, the trigger with just the two bottom fingers. Also, you can keep aiming with a crossbow for as long as you want, really. That always bothers me in movies when there's an archer just casually standing around holding the bow at full draw and just keeps talking and there's no exertion, nothing. No, no way. You cannot just stand there and just keep holding, you know, 80 pounds, 90, 100, even 140 or 60 or, it's ludicrous. Even just holding 60 pounds, just over a long period of time, this would be pretty exhausting. With the crossbow, you can absolutely stand there and have your villain monologue or whatever the heck, it's not a problem. And also you can get behind cover with a fully cocked crossbow and you can pop out from behind the cover and shoot so there's definitely some things that a crossbow can do that a bow can't. So which of these crossbows is my favorite? One of the medieval ones, the modern one? Well, actually this little guy here, this tiny crossbow right here, the cold steel cheap shot has really grown on me. Not because of its power. This has a draw weight of 130 pounds and the power stroke is nine inches or 23 centimeters the velocity is 229 fps is what i measured so that means the kinetic energy is at 21 foot pounds or 29 joules the funny thing is that means it's not that far from this you know this is 34 joules this is 29 it's not a dramatic difference now i'm going to tell you there's still going to be a difference in power because the bolts you shoot with a medieval crossbow are way heavier so they will have quite a bit more momentum than the light bolts that this one here shoots but it's not about the power with this it's just about ease of use and and about how light and compact this is this is extremely light it's a very small package and you can also cock this really quickly because of this mechanism right here. You just open up the lever and close it again and that's it. It's fully cocked, you're good to go. Then all you gotta do is insert a bolt. So this, among all the crossbows I've tried, is by far the fastest and the easiest to use. Now this also is a simple solid prod, no cams, 
So mechanically, there's very little that can go wrong. And in terms of maintenance, there's essentially nothing unless something breaks. Uh, yeah, sure, you, you have to wax the string and the bolt groove, but you have to do the same thing with other crossbows as well. You can attach whatever sight you want. You can replace the stock if you want. So there's a lot of things to like about it. And just in terms of trouble, <laughs> in terms of inconveniences that the medieval crossbows have been presenting me with, I mean, for one, the string adjustment. Um, I had to, at one point, I had to just take off the string completely and twist it a few more times because it, it just kept stretching. Uh, this is linen string. And uh, I also added some reinforcement here because as you can see, it, it frays. So you have to replace this sooner than you do a string on a modern crossbow. And this was such a process to make something that allows me to take off the string and also to measure the draw weight. So eventually I ended up making basically a proto crossbow stock that I could put it in. It allowed me to eventually get an accurate reading and readjust the string and you know, twisting it several more times to shorten it. And then eventually I got it to the point where it was back at the draw weight that it was supposed to have. And uh, that was with a workshop, which obviously I don't have access to anymore because that first house was a disaster and didn't work out. So now we're temporarily back in an apartment. So if I had to come up with a contraption like that here, I'd just be screwed. <laughs> it also really made me appreciate the practical advantages of modern materials. Because if you have a polymer frame, it's, it's just not going to shrink and warp, etc. On this crossbow here, the nut doesn't spin as freely as it's supposed to. You're supposed to keep holding the trigger after the shot broke, so this can freely spin and it's not, it doesn't hit other parts of the mechanism. Uh, this just doesn't. I tried to um, file it some more to give it more space, but it still doesn't want to spin perfectly. Another thing is the wedges here. They loosen up all the time. Even if you tap them in as far as you can, as you're shooting it from the vibration, they will always loosen up. So you have to very frequently tap them. Right now I have them in very loosely because it was disassembled before the video. I just put it together for the video. So just to show you the difference here. So you need to take these out. Don't lose them obviously. And then the bow irons come off, they're attached to the prod. And so then you can put it away. The cheap shot on the other hand, all you gotta do is push this pin through, which you can pull out and boom, that's it. And the pin is retained, you can't even lose it. And if you wanna put it back together, just pop it in, push the pin through, done. That's how easy it is. So there's just something about the ease of maintenance. Now, of course, it depends on the person. You know, if you're somebody who loves tinkering, with things, then of course you're gonna prefer the medieval crossbow reproductions. Personally, I don't have either the patience or the time to just mess around with things over and over again and maintain them diligently, etc. I'll, I'll do it to the extent that I have to with swords and whatnot, but this is also one of the reasons why I like to downsize my collection and don't just keep accumulating things because it's just, it's just too much, you know, if you have like, 10, 15 swords to maintain, you know, all make sure that they don't rust and resharpen, repair edge damage after cutting whenever necessary, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, take care of the leather on scabbards, all of this and that and the other. Something like this, it's just, I, I appreciate how undemanding it is. You know, you just keep waxing the string, you keep shooting it, you make sure you, you don't dry fire it, that's it. That's really it. You can also with regards to moisture, 
You know, the, the workshop was ridiculous. The humidity was out of this world. Everything would start to rust whenever it was in there for just one night or whatever. This, on the other hand, yeah, there's really not much that can go wrong there. You can have this in a humid environment and I think even the metal parts are, might be stainless. There might be a few parts on it that can rust, but overall, it's just a non-issue. So yeah, it may not be as powerful as the others, but basically you could probably, I didn't measure it time-wise, but I'm pretty sure I can shoot this four times probably in the, in the time it takes me to span the lighter crossbow. Let's say three. If I have the bolts on hand, I could probably shoot this 10 times <laughs> during the time it takes to uh, cock the, the heavy crossbow. At the same time, I haven't had this for anywhere near as long as the other crossbows. So there could be some long-term issues, you never know. But even so, it's also way more affordable than the others. So there's that as well. Anyway, so that's what I wanted to talk about. As said, if you're interested in a crossbow, you're in the market for one, check out the, the link down below where I, I'm selling two. And yeah, hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.